Hey everyone, it's Kevin Jones with Life, Mind & Money. It's that time of year. No, unfortunately not the holidays, which I wish it still was, but it's tax season. Now we all dread this time of year, probably because we fear that we owe the IRS a bunch of money. Some of us will be lucky enough to get a refund from them. But all the paperwork that we have to gather and put into a computer system or do it by hand or with a consultant to make sure that we all get it done by that April 15th date. Now with it being tax season, I want to make sure you understand two key terms are used commonly and that's a deductible and a credit. A lot of times these terms get intertwined and I want to make sure you understand the differences because it can make a big difference in your tax return. So let's that, let's get started. If you're new to this channel, please see that little red button below and hit the subscribe button, as I certainly would appreciate your support in growing this channel. While many of us have heard about deductibles and credits, many times we hear those words and we get happy, mainly because we feel like money is coming our way from the IRS. But unfortunately, that is not necessarily the case all the time. So I want to do a deep dive into each of them and how it will exactly play into your finances when you file your next tax return. So let's start with credits. The credit is by far the easiest one to explain as it's directly taken off your tax bill. So let's say you qualify for a $1,000 tax credit and you owe nothing to the government. Then that $1,000 would come directly off your bill and you would end up with a $1,000 refund. It honestly is that simple. Same goes if you owed a government $1,000 and you qualified for a $1,000 tax credit, then you would know nothing to the government. There are many credits out there that you may qualify. As you can see on the screen, here are some common ones that you may qualify. Maybe a child care credit, or a child tax credit, or if maybe you're adopting, there's a credit there as well. So take a look at these. And also see the link below as I've got a list of common credits that you may have never heard of and didn't even realize you qualify in the first place. So when it comes to credits, it literally means money directly off your final tax bill. It honestly is as simple as that. Now a deductible is a bit different from a credit. Now certainly I don't want you to mix up these twos because you'll be very disappointed. While a credit was money directly off your tax returns, a deductible is actually done a little bit differently where it takes the total amount and then matches it against your current tax bracket to give you a final number. That number then actually can then be taken off your taxes to be either low the, lower the bill that you owe or maybe even potentially give you a refund. Let me explain this through an example. So a common deductible most people are familiar with, especially ones who own a home, is called a mortgage interest deductible. And what that is that any interest that you paid the prior year, so this case 2019, to a mortgage provider, that money is deductible on your tax return. So let's use this. I paid $10,000 in interest to the mortgage provider in 2019. And I need to figure out what tax bracket I am. So a common one is under the new structure put in last year is we're going to use 24%. So what I'm going to do is take that $10,000 and multiply it by 24% as you see on the screen. That will give us a total amount of $2,400. That's the breakdown in terms of like you saw on a credit that could potentially come off of your tax return to either lower your bill or maybe give you a refund. Now, while all this sounds great, there's one caveat to all this, and that's called the standard deduction. The standard deduction is what every taxpayer in the United States receives. So if you are a married couple filing jointly, the standard deduction is $24,400. If you're a head of household, that standard deduction is $18,300. And if you're just a single person filing, that standard deduction is $12,200. So what this means for you is, 
When you start totaling up all of those deductions, now think about it. You just had the mortgage interest deduction that we just talked about. But there's also many other deductions out there. Maybe it's dependent care or medical expenses. There's many out there in the place so that I would have you check out and see a link below on more common ones that may affect you and your finances. But what the key point here is that you've got to build up those deductions beyond the standard deduction in order to make an impact on, on your own finances, on your tax return that year. So if I'm married and filed jointly, my standard deduction is $24,400. If all the only deduction I had was the $10,000 in mortgage interest paid and I didn't have any other deductions available to me, then in that case, I would absolutely be taking the standard deduction because $24,400 is much larger than that than $10,000 and would be much more advantageous for me to either get a refund or, some, or completely bring down my tax bill. So you really got to match up the two. Like, so when we talked about a credit, that was money that came directly off my tax bill. It had nothing to do with any deductions I had or the standard deduction that all Americans get. But if you're, if you're one who has a lot of deductions available to you, you're going to total those up and that's called itemized deductions. And you'll absolutely take advantage of that because that will exceed the standard deduction and ultimately will bring down your tax bill and may potentially give you a refund. So if you realize you don't have a lot of deductions available to you, then don't waste your time gathering all of that data up. Go straight to the standard deduction and you'll get through tax season very easily, which I know all of us would appreciate. So you can see a deduction can be a great thing but you got to make sure that you actually have enough of them to actually have an impact on your own taxes. If not, you're going to be resorting right back to that standard deduction and that's okay. Take advantage of it. That's why it's been put in the tax system and you'll end up getting your taxes done probably within 15 to 30 minutes. Now I know everybody would love to receive a tax refund. I mean, seriously, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want to check directly from the IRS? But I'm going to say there's one problem with this and that actually getting a refund is a problem. Say what? Boy, Kevin, have you lost your mind? Well, maybe I have, but let me explain. So a tax refund really means that you actually gave the government too much money over the course of a year and they owe it back to you. So essentially you gave the government a loan at 0% interest and now after all of this time months later into the following year they know that all that money back to you when you could have been investing it how is that a good thing trust me on this if we know we're gonna receive a refund and you've been receiving one year after year it means that we're ending up giving too much money back so what we need to do is really examine our own paychecks when we start a job you sign a W-4 and on that W-4, there you set the amount of exemptions you are taking. Exemptions are what puts you into a table so that your employer knows exactly how much taxes to withhold when it comes to tax time. So if you're getting too much refund back, what you need to do is actually increase your exemptions and so that less taxes are taken out for each paycheck. You will get a lot of extra money each paycheck. Who wouldn't want more money in their paycheck? And this is a great way to get it. So now you have the ability to save, invest, pay off debt throughout the year instead of actually holding money back and giving the government essentially a 0% interest loan. So I would highly advise you to look at your exemptions and modify them year after year so that you can try to get your taxes to be exactly zero because you don't really want a refund and even if you owe a little bit, it's okay, but you don't want a bloated refund. That means you're withholding, you're holding back way too much income to the government. Hire those exemptions so that you receive more money in each paycheck. The government takes enough of our money. Don't have another excuse to give them more. Many of you work with a tax expert to get your filings done each year, and that may cost you a couple hundred dollars. And it may very well be worth it, especially if your taxes are complicated. But you may also want to look at do, using software 
that could cost $30 to $40 to get the same job done. It just depends on how much you're wanting to dive into it. I personally use software to get my taxes done just because I know exactly where I need to go with my paperwork to get it done as fast as possible to determine whether I owe money or going to get a refund that year. If you ultimately feel like your taxes are not too out of control and you've been using a tax advisor or consultant, you may want to consider using tax software this go around to save you a few dollars in the process. Most tax software is pretty easy to use and walk you step by step through the process. It may be worth a try. I now hope you have a better understanding of common terms out there like a deductible and a credit when it comes to your taxes. And also refreshing you on what exactly a tax refund means to you and how you can take control and get more money in your pocket throughout the year. In Life, Mind & Money, we focus on money. Don't let the government hold on to your money free of charge. Set up your paycheck so that when you receive it each week, bi-weekly or month, you're retaining as much as possible and maximize every deductible and credit out there when you're filing your next return. If you haven't already done so, please tap that little like button as I certainly appreciate all the support against the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you've got comments, leave them below as I love to converse with you. And lastly, if you haven't done so, please hit that little red button down there and hit subscribe. And also make sure to hit the little bell so you're notified when my next video comes out. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.